everyone. My name is Don Wall, and I am just going to share a little testimony today. Uh, this is kind of a nature setting there in Mount Rainier, and uh, uh, I wanted to continue what I was sharing earlier about a glimpse of heaven. The day after I got saved, I, uh, I was fortunate enough to go work my way back to a chapel because I didn't want to blow it. I mean, I had caused myself a lot of grief and sin, and I knew how deadly that was as far as my spirit, my attitude, and um, I don't know, just being out here in nature, I want to record all of that that happened because people have asked me to share this, and I don't know, I, think, I guess it's pretty impactful. When I first became a Christian, um, you know, God gave me a glimpse of heaven, and I thought everybody got that. I just thought it was natural. It was after about a year, I, I realized maybe that wasn't the case, but... Um, so I um, worked my way back to a chapel, and I remember it was the second day, and um, I asked God, uh, wow, I am so energized, and I am feeling so <laughs> tremendous right now and powerful, and I just wish the whole army could get saved. I mean, if the American army got saved, the Russians couldn't, you know, defeat us no matter what. It was like, that was the Cold War era in 1983, and, you know, that was, that was my thinking at the time. And God, you know, he says, can, can you trust me? And I'm like, yeah, I just gave you my whole heart for the first time ever. I mean, I committed to follow you no matter what. I committed my heart to you. I, I don't care what people think of me. I, I know you are a true love. And so um, he said, come forward. And I worked my way down into the altar again in a uh, different chapel. But um, nobody was really around. But I, I kneeled, and, and next thing I know... It's like my spirit had left my body. I had an out-of-body experience. And I, I couldn't tell you if it was two minutes, 20 minutes, two hours. Seemed like two hours, but I know when I came back to my body, it had not moved one iota. I mean, it was exactly like I left it. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like C.S. Lewis Narnia series or something. But I know it was seen a lot of things in heaven. And I guess that's really what I want to share um, uh you know, I, I asked God about the army, and the first thing I see is there's these, like, generals and stuff. They were surrounded this uh, war table-like thing, strategy table. And so they're, they're making their plans and their plots and everything, and they're putting, moving all their army and their assets. And, and as I'm watching this, I'm realizing that they're looking at each other, and it was as if they needed to impress each other. It was, it was their number one goal. It wasn't so much winning this war. It was... It was showing off their skills. And I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, and it's like it's dawned on me that this is, this is all irrelevant. Moving these pieces around, these armies, bunches of people, and it was like the Lord was saying, these wars on earth are irrelevant compared to the spirit world. And there's a real warfare going on in the heavens. It's angels versus the demons and the devils and all Satan and his armies trying to overcome God. But that's the real warfare, but it, it, it's about people's souls, not just their lives on earth, but their souls for eternity. And I remember um, as I'm, I'm watching this, it's like not just army, but it's the same in business and corporations and, you know, people who are striving at the top of the ladder to try to impress others and prove themselves. It's because they need that public affection um, from men. It, it, it's as if they don't have that love that I shared about earlier, about you know un, that vulnerableness, that openness, that realize they need to be loved, and they want to love others freely and openly, and, and that's their heart, and that's that's what makes life tick for them. And if you don't have that, if you haven't found that connection and realization in yourself, you know, you're left with a lot of insecurity, and and. Um, these generals were, were all about looking for security through their works. And as I'm there and I'm realizing this, all of a sudden I realize I'm looking around and, and I'm in this place. I mean, it was like the highest place above my body. I, I call it Zion because Zenith is supposed to be the highest place above us, whatever, as we go straight up as high as the heavens. And all I could think is that, you know, I'm looking around and I'm realizing that we don't, we're not breathing. We don't need to breathe. I'm in this heavenly place. And, you know, there's an atmosphere, but we don't need to breathe. And our bodies are perfect. Um, we're in the prime of our life. It's like there's no imperfection. Everything, any 
disease or problem that you've had in this life, your heavenly body is perfect. And um, we don't have any sin nature whatsoever. It is totally gone. And you don't struggle with that at all. Your, your heart for others is totally pure. And you want to bless others constantly. It's like your nature. And everything is so vibrant. It's like there's not a sun to light up everything like there is in this beautiful setting. But there's a light that comes out of you. It's, it's like a, a joy. It's an aura that comes out of everything. Even the trees and everything that's created in God's kingdom. And, and there wasn't like air that we needed to breathe, but there was an atmosphere. It was like a current of love. That's all I could say. And everything moves in and out through that current of love. It pervades everything. And it's God's presence. And God is right beside us all the time. He's, his presence is right there. And He's not bothering us. He's not overbearing or anything. But if you have a question, if you want to know something, He doesn't make you go study it in a book or something. He gives you the answer right there because He delights in sharing all that He is with you. And the more you know of him, the, it's the deeper bond that you get. You, you know, it's a deeper love and, and bond. And so, you know, the first reaction when you see somebody in heaven, it's like you want to bless them. You want to, you know, tell a joke or give them a compliment or tell them a story or things that, you know, would lift them up. And that's everybody's first desire. And everybody's, it's everybody's doing that. You know, it's like everybody also is receiving that. And so... From there, I remember um, if I wanted to go someplace with people, I just phew, went, translated in the spirit or something. You didn't need wings to fly. You just, phew, you were gone. And everything was so beautiful, the fields and green things. And I remember being by a river at one point, and, and I'm standing with people that know me and I love. I, know, I don't know them, but we're singing songs. And I didn't know, you know anything that time, but I guess they were praise songs. And it just felt so good and so natural. And everybody was just you know, one heart, and I remember even meeting ancestors, like, that knew me from way, way back generations, and they were, like, giving me big hugs, we knew you could make it, we knew you'd give your heart to Jesus, you know, we knew, we loved you, and we've been praying for you, and, and um, there was different levels, sometimes it was like our bodies were transparent, and sometimes they were, you know, it was just different bodies for different levels, but it was all you, it was your personality, and, um, I did. I know. I, there's so much. God shared personal information. I asked some questions about that I was struggling with things. I remember one time I asked him about Satan. You know, why this Satan guy? Why do we have to deal with all that suffering? Why is he allowed to be out there? And and God showed me it was like a lamps. There was lamps. You know, heavenly lamps. And if you turn a switch, the lamp comes on. Well, God was looking for love. He was looking for a deep, deep, deep relational love that is way more than just. Um, you know, a, 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 an unanimated thing can create. And it's like the angels, even though they were spectacular and way above us in, in their state of being, they were still like robots. They, they didn't have the ability to love God. If God said, love me, they say, okay, we love you. But it wasn't, wasn't real. It wasn't, there was no depth to it. He wanted the kind of love like you're walking hand in hand through a park with a friend and if a danger was to arise, you would immediately, without thinking lay down your life to protect your friend you know and your friend would have that same desire and it was like that kind of connection is what God is after it's more precious than anything else that he has created and so at the risk of all of his creation he has to give out free will to allow people to choose or angels to choose what they're going to live for or what they're going to die for how they're going to express their love and to do that in giving out free love, it's like some of the angels just blew it right off the bat. It was, you know, you, you can take that opportunity to love and you can extend it to somebody else and you can express your need to love them and, and, and tell them how much you appreciate them and care about them. And, and then if that love responds and comes back to you, it's, it's so wonderful. It's so fulfilling. But some of the angels looked at themselves only. And, and as they're looking at themselves, like Lucifer did, he's just seeing how magnificent he is and how spectacular he is and all these properties that he has and powers. And it's as if, you know, he became so focused on just that that he could not see anything else. And, and he noticed there's a difference between him and God. God is, is, you know, a degree higher than Satan, or, you know, even though Lucifer was the highest angel, God was still above all that. 
and, and it, it just enraged him and made him so insecure because if you're self-focused, if that's all you can see, you know, anything that makes you look less is going to cause you a lot of heartache. And so Satan starts this huge rebellion and there's a lot of other angels who are just now getting their first opportunity to love and some of them are making the same mistake. They're just looking at themselves and they're, instead of loving others, they're loving themselves. And so they listen to Satan's words. There's a huge rebellion. It was like they were spewed out of heaven. Um, it, you know, their nature just spewed them out. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't exit fast enough. It's like two magnetic poles that are just, you know, they, they cannot coexist and one gets repelled. That's about what, you know, Jesus said he saw Satan fall like lightning. That's, that's sort of what I saw there from the heavenly perspective. And it was... Um, you know, all Satan can think of is trying to take over God because that's the one person above him. So the God could have destroyed them all right there. But instead, it was as if even though they're way bigger than us or more powerful, higher state of being, have so much more abilities, it's tougher to deal with them. But still God says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use them to still accomplish my goal of populating heaven with those who love others first and um, in that he created man and man was a lower state much slower almost clay vessels but yet the power of love and the power of faith is allowed to exist in this reality with us and and through that we become even more powerful than Lucifer even more powerful than all the fallen angels because, you know, even the angels study humans because they're looking to see the mysteries of God. And the real mystery of God is that purpose of love. And um, when you understand that, what, what God is really looking for, you know, it, it brings such peace and, and purpose and joy to the rest of, of your life. So, you know, even though Satan is, is running around doing all of his things, he's got himself his own little kingdom. And I, and I saw it, like, from afar. It was like this rope, big rope ladder in space or something. And all these demons and entities are on this rope and, and they're like trying to crawl up and they got one knot and then they're pulling themselves up. But the people above them are constantly kicking them in the face and trying to knock them back down because their only security is their position on the ladder. And, and Satan's at the top and if anybody comes close to him, he's kicking them, knocking them down. He's fearful of losing his place, but at the same time he needs them to overtake God and so it's this constant pandemonious type degenerative cycling downward spiral that the enemy you know his kingdom is all about whereas God's kingdom was this huge like plateau like this field where everybody was equal they were on the same plane nobody needed to be above anybody and God's sort of in the middle but his love's radiating out and the pulsing and in and out in and out and it was like everybody's receiving it and giving it. And the creativity never stops. Even, even when we leave this world, there's still a lot of creativity. I, I can remember seeing Jesus from a distance. And it wasn't like he had a whole throng of people, a big audience around him. He didn't need a whole bunch of worshipers following him all over. It was like he had a couple of buddies or something that they, they were just walking and sharing. And, and it was like, um, you know, he was just happy that other people we're living out the life that God created them to live, to love others first and, and enjoy that um, freedom to love others. And, and, you know, God just showed me so much in this short time. I mean, it almost became so fun. I, I, I almost forgot where I was. And I started thinking, oh, my goodness, is this, is this too good to be true? And, and I don't want to blow it. I don't want to make any mistakes. I don't want to, you know. And God showed me that everything that's done in love you know, for others first and stuff is pure. But um, I got to the point where I even started doubting what I was seeing and thinking, oh, I can't, you know, I don't know if I sh should partake in this. It's too much. And and at that point, <laughs> the glimpse stopped. It was like I started coming back to my body. And I'm like, no, 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 take me back. Take me back. Please, please, please take me back. But, you know, that was, that was sort of the end of it. And I, I'm back in my body in the chapel. But um, there was this... God has so much for us, so much. This is just a temporary, temporary existence. Do not even think this life has anything to compare with what comes in the next life. I mean, there is just so much. Every soul that you meet in heaven is like another heaven. It, it's all relational. 
it, you know, you, you learn from their experiences and how they overcame, and it's just so entertaining, the, the, the stories that they can share and, and, and their new creativity. You know, forget about crowns and jewels and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's just being with another friend to live with for, forever. And uh, that's really what heaven's all about. It's about love, true love, free, free from the heart.